Welcome to beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the D3 National Championships. We have the women's semifinal here between Carlton Eclipse and Wellesley Whiptails. I am Mike Ball. Joining me in the booth today is Helen Koth. And we have an exciting matchup here. Helen, why don't you break down how the two teams got here this weekend? Yeah, thank you, Mike. So Carlton is number two seed in this tournament. Um, Wellesley is number four. And they've been the scrappier of the two teams. Carlton has really been taking everybody to task here this weekend. So it's, it's going to be a good game. We'll see how they stack up against Carlton. Yeah, Carlton coming in as the number two overall seed here as we get a look at the bracket to see the path these two teams took. Wellesley taking the more difficult route, working from the pre-quarters this morning and managing to pull an upset over Portland in the last round to get to this game. Helen, did you happen to catch any of that game between Portland and Wellesley? Unfortunately, I did not. I was scorekeeping for another game, but I did keep up with the Ulti World Live Twitter. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Helen has been helping out this weekend as a volunteer, and we appreciate all the volunteers that have helped make this weekend such a big success. Carlton, on the other hand, didn't have to play in the pre-quarters, taking care of business in pool play and earning that buy for themselves. So they're going to have a little bit of the fresher legs with one less game under their belt here. Helen, what do you think the outlook for this game is as far as some of the advantages for each of the two teams? I have been told that Carlton is going to blow Wes Wellesley out of the water. I'm hoping that's not the case. It would be a close game. Um, I think that Carlton has a really deep roster. They all trust each other a lot. But I did talk to the Wellesley coach beforehand. They are a very player-led team. They trust each other a lot, and I'm excited to watch them. You know, there's always expectations and there's always a favorite in each game, but as soon as the disc goes up, none of that matters. It's just the 14 players on the field battling it out, and this Wellesley team has earned their spot in the semifinals, just like Carlton has, and we expect to see a spirited effort from them and hope for an excellent game here tonight from Milwaukee. As you see, the two teams having a good bit of fun with each other there, lined up across from one another, and we expect a, a spirited, well-played affair between these two teams. Helen, you've had the privilege of, of being around the complex all weekend and volunteering for a variety of games. Let's zoom out and look at the big picture for the tournament this weekend. What are some of your observations that you've made? What are some of your favorite teams that you've gotten to get eyes on this weekend? Yeah, I got to score keep for three games that Rice Torque was in, and they were a lot of fun. It was so fun to watch. Sandy Wu, specifically number 19 on their team, she is quite the player. I recently found out she's only a sophomore, so I get to watch wow. her again for a couple years. Um, it was just like these teams have heart. These teams have worked hard. They want to be here. And I uh, was a D1 player, so I've never had the privilege of seeing the heart of D3, sure. a.k.a. the people's division, <laughs> as I've heard it called so far. <laughs> Yeah, we jokingly slash lovingly refer to D3 as the people's division here internally amongst our Ulti World staff. And just to give you people an idea of, of the setting, the environment we have here tonight, the lights are just now starting to come on. It's a little bit cool out, high 50s, uh, steady winds. It has been breezier throughout the day, so these teams are actually getting to play in a little bit more mild of conditions. The wind has been moving from right to left on your screen. It looks like that's the direction it's continuing to stay in right now. The but wind was at 21 miles per hour in a couple games ago, and now it's only eight. So these teams are lucking out because wind has really dominated a lot of these games this weekend. No doubt. It looks like we're going to be seeing Wellesley pull first to a receiving Carlton Eclipse team. Helen, talk about a couple of the players maybe from each of these teams that we should keep an eye on and expect to see make an impact in this game. Absolutely. Well, first, right off the bat, um, Carlton, number five, Rowan Dong. They are a powerhouse on O and D. I'm excited to watch them all game. And um, I was watching Wellesley warm up. There were some beautiful throws from them. I'm excited for really their whole team. But uh, more specifically, double zero Barbara Dolan. She is one to watch as well. Awesome. Well, let's see how it shakes out. We've got Carlton on offense first here, running a vertical stack. Number four, Charlotte Zinda with the disc, looking for a reset. 
Finds number 15, Harper Brooks Kahn. A lot of early cycling from the cutters on Carlton as the disc gets swung back to Zenda. Zenda keeps it moving. Thomas with the fake, finds the under to number 26, Claire James. And a turnover early on here, right as Carlton were getting to the doorstep. And now Wellesley have it with almost the full field to go. Good quick movement here from the Wellesley D-line, but a throw pops up. And an authoritative block from Molly Schwartz going up in the crowd and knocking the disc down. Zoe Marquise with the disc. Oh, and an unlucky drop there for Charlotte Zinda. Gives Wellesley the disc with better field position this time. Powerful under from Jenny Chan. Both these teams had quite a long bye before this game, so I'm interested to see who pulls out with the most energy in the beginning. Wellesley go for the huck, and it is cleaned up once again by Schwartz. Her second block on the point. As you mentioned, both teams with a sizable break coming into this game, Helen, and a little bit of rust, it seems, on this first point with a couple of turnovers going each direction. Excellent grab there. As Carlton are in the red zone. Beautiful up line. That's number 14, Maya Kalmus. Hitting number four, Charlotte Zenda up the line. And after a couple of cracks at it, Carlton are able to get their hold. Helen, what'd you see on that first point? Well, just off of the score alone, a good old bread and butter open side 0-2 score. Love to see it. It was a lot of patient, patient O from Carlton. I'm sure we'll see much more of that throughout this game. Yeah, and as you see the deep look there from the Wellesley D-line that got eaten up by Schwartz. Wellesley had a couple of cracks at it, unable to really get anything going. What do you think of the Wellesley Whiptails defensive line's attack on offense when they had the disc? Great question. I think they're, they're a little jittery. I think that they, they got to get their heads in the game a little bit still here, but I'm optimistic for them. I think you got to be encouraged, though, to have a couple of cracks at it on the first point. Didn't really come close to converting either one, but you got to start by getting the looks before you can convert them. So now we get a look at this Carlton defense and this Wellesley O-line. Gorgeous call from Carlton. Wellesley floating the first throw, but it's able to get cleaned up there by number three, Leah Black. And she shoots it already to number 72, Annalise Paul. Interesting decision there. Not even really that open of a cutter, but better to turn the disc in their end zone than your own, I suppose. Absolutely. Punt and play D. Big fake there. Nice grab from number 12. Marquise. Nice grab from 26. Yeah, Claire James sliding there to retain possession. The game I watched of hers, uh, of Carlton's, she was all over the field with the grabs. Excited for that. A little bit loose with the throw there. Goes to the waiting Wellesley defender, and they shoot quickly the other direction. Nice run down. Bella Steedley. She flips it in to number zero, Tess Dolan. And Wellesley, after an early turnover, are able to get the disc back, march it down the field, and get their first hold of the game. That offense definitely looks better for Wellesley than it did for his point. Yeah, you saw, I think there's going to be, from what we've seen early on, a need for Wellesley to balance the deep game with the patience of working it. You saw them force the, force the first deep look with the throwaway, but then the second one you saw there was a pump, move the mark, and throw the inside shot. Nice flat throw. Seemed a lot more controlled than the stagnant hook from the first one. Absolutely. I think both teams are truly playing very eagerly. They're happy to be here. 
This is it. This is their moment. As the Wellesley defense comes back on the field here. Had two cracks at a break on the first point. Look to see if they can get another couple of chances at it. Solid pull there from Josie Koo. Kalmus goes wide to Schwartz. A couple of cuts get denied downfield, but Schwartz is able to find Kalmus on the reset. Moves it down to Claire James. Gorgeous break from Rowan Dong. Oh, and an unfortunate drop there. Gives the Wellesley D-line their third opportunity at a break. Oh, an excellent deep cut, but the Huck floats, pops up in the air. As Josie Koo puts her hands on her head, frustrated with herself for that mistake. Now Carlton bring it in on the far sideline. You're right about their need to conserve that deep game. Yeah, we've seen the two that they've thrown out of stagnation have been turnovers. But the one that they threw in the flow of their offense was connected. Need to just look to move the disc a few times before shooting deep instead of shooting it out of a standstill. And that's another turnover there. Claire James overshooting the reset. And another stagnant hook. Oh, and oh. this one gets popped up. A recovery. Oh, and another eager look there. Wellesley just shooting the disc with no fear. Not waiting at all. Catching and going right away every time. Great cut there from Schwartz. Works it up to James. Thomas and Rowell there. And a look to the end zone. It's going to be completed. That's Marquise to Schwartz for the Eclipse hold. Third time was the charm there for the Carlton O-line, Helen. Yep. Seems like so far Carlton's offense is just clean and a little bit slower than Wellesley. Wellesley's got to slow it down if they want to match it up with Carlton here. Yeah, we get a look there at the huck that got macked into the air for Wellesley. Carlton come back the other direction, working it up the four side. Strong, decisive cutting there. Schwartz made several great cuts that point. Nice to see her get rewarded with the goal. You can already get a feel for the team a few points in, and it's very obvious that Carlton, everyone trusts each other. They know where everyone is going. They trust each other to throw what they want to throw, catch what they want to catch. It's looking really good. All holds so far. Both teams, both O-lines doing their job, doing what they're supposed to do. Let's see how this Wellesley O-line looks in their second point of the game. Emily Hall with the pull for Carlton. Excellent pull. Gets past the opposite brick mark. Looks like his own from Carlton. Yeah, switching it up after playing matchup in the first point. Carlton going with a 3-2-2 zone here. It's interesting since the wind has died down today. We'll see how it works out. So far, not too well. 
Yeah, Wellesley slicing up the middle right now. Koo has it, floats it to the end zone. Nice grab from 84. And that's a goal. Savannah Carey brings oh. down the floaty shot from Koo. And just like that, we stay on serve. But that is the first clean hold of the game from either team. Interesting that what Wellesley needed to slow it down was a uh, zone defense from Carlton. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like Carlton slowed it down for them, right? Yes. Get, saved them from themselves, didn't let them huck it by bringing down the zone early Absolutely. on. Served it up. So we see the Wellesley huddle there. No blood draw in either direction so far, just both O-lines taking care of business. Although the Whiptails have had several more chances than Eclipse to get that first break. Although I love O-line holds, it's a nice clean ultimate. You love a break, so I'm hoping we'll get to see some action. This game certainly has some breaks in it. I think it's just a matter of the first one to come. I think that's gonna. I think. I think the dam will break after that. I think both these teams are still kind of feeling each other out, getting an idea for what the opposing offense wants to do figuring out where they can be exposed and attacked. We see another pull from Koo. Not her best effort, but it does make it past midfield, and Koo is the first one down on her own pull. You can hear how loud and active and engaged the sidelines are right now, really helping out their teammates on the field communicating as much as possible. Carlton unable to get anything going downfield right now. Everything's in the handler space. That is an excellent around there from Brooks Kahn. High stall. Needs a bailout. Unable to find it, and Koo gets the disc. You know Koo's looking for the end zone. Settles for the underneath option to Bella Steedley. Wide open. Yeah, Steedley able to quickly work it up the line to number seven, Becky Chen. Chen back to Steedley. Shoots for the end zone, and it is just too wide for Tess Dolan. But that is the closest we have seen to a break opportunity, and now Carlton have to go the full 70 to get their hold. Steedley nearly with the run through block there. And the huck goes up. Excellent throw there. And the continuation look to Schwartz. What a play from Carlton. The huck and then the continuation to the end zone. And after a near close call there, getting broken, they are able to get their hold. That was a gorgeous run down in the end zone by Schwartz. She was all alone and she waited for it. Yeah, we see on the replay there from Charlotte Zinda kind of dictating for her cutter to go deep, telling her where she wanted her, hitting her in stride. And the continuation to Schwartz. Schwartz making an impact early in this game. We see two goals and two blocks in the early offing. Still all holds here in Milwaukee. Both O-lines taking care of business. You gotta wonder if which way this is gonna go, Helen, whether Wellesley are gonna come to regret missing all these chances or if this is a sign of future break opportunities to come for the Whiptails. I think that it is. I think uh, Carlton's clean, and they're, they're a team that knows each other well, but I've, we've seen some turns from them already, so who's to say what's to come from them? Great pull there, and a run through block for Alex Rowell. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. This is certainly the best break chance that Carlton has had. Just about 25 yards to go. Oh, and the throw from Rowell is too low for Tess Barton.
Hall with the nice outside in. Excuse me, that was Leah Black with the outside in throw there. Wellesley just running the disc up the four side, and they're able to flip it up into the end zone. And that's number four, Maya Collins with the hold. And Helen, after another scare where a team gets an opportunity, a quality break look, we're still sitting on serve three to three. Yeah, it's very interesting that the break opportunities haven't been capitalized on. So we see a replay of the run through block there from Well. Looks like just a miscommunication between the two Wellesley players, but the giveaway sends Wellesley off to the races. Dolan to Chen to Collins. Straight up the four side, easy as you like it for the Wellesley hold. The Carlton sideline getting fired up, trying to keep their O-line's energy high, keep their execution high, keep this game on serve. If you're Carlton, you're happy to just exchange holds all the way out. The onus is going to be on Wellesley to get that first break at some point. I talked to Carlton's coach earlier, and they said that their theme for the weekend was beach paradise. So, <laughs> hence all the Hawaiian shirts. Nothing like the beach in Milwaukee. <laughs> We do have a lake with beaches. <laughs> Zinda in a high stall situation there is able to find Kalmus. Swings it to Schwartz. Back to Kalmus. Zinda just begging for an option. And that's a nice big under there from number 12, Marquise. Back to Zinda. Zinda has a couple of targets going to the end zone. Opts for the second one and just barely overthrows Brooks Kahn. And now Wellesley, once again, with a break opportunity. Can they convert this one? High stall there, but they're able to get it centered. Oh, and an error there. Gives Carlton the disc back. They're about 20 yards out. High stall, reset. Oh, and the drop. Nice defensive positioning from Wesley there. Yeah, that's, that's a good call, Helen. A lot of tight reset pressure there. Forced that tough look. Uh, we see a flick get popped up. Oh, Zinda having none of that. Oh, nice. and Zinda saves possession. Incredible focus there. Great recovery on the point from her of where her cutters should go. And just two throws later, Hagee finds Brooks Kahn and Carlton get their hold. As we stay perfect here in this game, both D-lines struggling to get anything going. All holds so far. Carlton four, Wellesley three. So Hel Helen, this game's kind of settled into a rhythm here of both offenses feeling pretty comfortable. What's your, what's your opinion here on what either one of these teams need to change up or try in order to throw their opposing offense off of their rhythm? Yeah, honestly, I see it as a game of energy at this point. I'd like to see the D-line from either team really bring that energy, get and hold that break. I think that they're, they're doing their job, obviously, as a D-line, but they just need to go that extra mile here. Yeah, it feels like it's going to come down to what individual can make that big play, right? When you're in the national semifinals, you need somebody to step up and make the decisive play and seize the moment, seize the opportunity to step up and be the difference maker. And one of these defenses is going to have that playmaker here soon. It's just a matter of which one's going to strike first. Absolutely. Looking at the stats earlier before this game, 
those defensive playmakers are Rowan Dong for Carlton and Bella Steedley for Wellesley. We'll see if they have what it takes out there. Speaking of Steedley, she rips it deep and it hits Maya Collins in stride. My goodness. What, what? a throw. <laughs> That was absolutely gorgeous. My goodness. That's as good a throw as we've seen all night. I mean, that backhand just floated perfectly for Collins to run under. And I love the conviction from Steedley to throw it. She caught, saw her target going, and ripped it. What a beautiful throw from Bella Steedley. Absolutely. And the wind throughout the day dying down, I think, is truly to both of these teams' advantage. But I know that warming up and playing games in that wind and then transitioning to little to no wind in this game here. They're playing a different game now. No doubt. And that's another clean hold for this Wellesley O-line. They've got two of them so far, whereas Carlton's still yet to really have a clean O point. And you got to wonder if Wellesley's ability to hold without turning the disc over, without having that pressure on themselves to get it back, is going to pay off in the long run. We see Josie Koo here with another pole. Carlton in their same vert stack look, trying to initiate with a reset at first. Oh, and that's a huge gainer to Marquise. Marquise dumps it off right away. Oh, and that throw is just too wide for Claire James. And now Wellesley have yet another opportunity to break. Black swings it to Koo, works it upfield to Dolan. Dolan to Collins, excellent concentration on that grab. with the around to black. Nice under there from Savannah Carey. Oh, and she just barely overshoots Dolan. Wellesley get close again to that elusive break. Lots of reset pressure here as the stall count climbs. That's a great cut from Heiji. Working it downfield to Marquise. Another big gainer from Schwartz. Nice patience here from Carlton as the call is on the field. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay, resolved. So let's come in. What was our last stall here? Okay, so saying three then? Okay, saying three, saying three. So the hut goes up. Excellent block there from Dolan. And there's Black hitting Steedley on the under. Steedley back to black. Excellent grab there from Savannah Carey. She boosts it. And Molly Schwartz back there patrolling the deep space once again for her third block of the game. Just not allowing anything to go back there for Wellesley's defensive offense. Again, Wellesley's deep shots are being missed every time. Yeah, they need to stay patient and grind the disc down the field for these breaks. Another gorgeous break from uh, As we see Haig with the disc. Apologies to Grace Haig for my mispronunciations earlier. Works the disc up the field. 
Good patience here. Zinda with it now. Nice throw to space. Brooks gone. Brooks gone with the breaks. Just past a bidding Marquise. Koo gets the big under. Has Steedley going deep. Chooses not to pull it. And you're starting to see Carlton defenders downfield try and front their matchup. Not respecting the deep game yet from Wellesley because Wellesley keeps turning it over. Oh, nice layout there. Comes up just short. Disc gets swung to Black. Black goes wide to Dolan. Dolan has been a cutting machine. Finds Steedley. Steedley shoots. Just outside of the end zone now. Carey puts it up. And that is Koo with the first break of the game. Wellesley had been knocking on the door, trying to get there, had many chances. That was the one to do it. Excellent offense, and now this game has officially started as we have our first break of the game. We talked earlier about how those D-lines, in order to get that break, we're gonna have to make those big plays, and that was a point start to end with big plays from both teams. Yeah, we saw that layout block attempt from Brooks Conn come up just short. Nice touch on that throw from Carey to Koo. And that was a long grinding port point, resulting in a timeout from Carlton. Not surprising to see that timeout, just because if they're going to have their top players get back out there, they're going to need a little bit of rest after we saw multiple turnovers on that point. If you're the Carlton coach right now, Helen, what are you saying to your team in the huddle? I am saying that the missed opportunities they've had in the end zone have been just over shots. They just have to, I know I was saying earlier that they really slowed their game down, but I guess they gotta slow their throws down a little bit too. They, they keep overshooting it just out of reach for their end zone plays. Yeah, we have seen a couple of throws going just wide for Carlton as we see the stats there for Josie Koo. Off to an excellent start this game, doing a lot of work for Wellesley, particularly on the defensive side of the disc. I talked to the Carlton coach earlier, and number 25, Tess Barton, is the sister of Cameron, their coach. Love to see that family connection. Very cool connection to hear there, Helen. Love Tess's brother supporting her on the field. And now we wait to see if Wellesley is able to stack multiple breaks on top of them, on top of each other, go on some sort of run here, see if they can build up a cushion. This would be the direction that is typically upwind. The wind is very gentle right now, not enough of a presence to really disrupt the better throwers on these teams. For Carlton, it looks like the usual suspects right now out there on offense, that timeout called to give them a break so they'd be ready to go for this point. It does seem like a very strong line for Carlton. You see Zinda with the disc. Again, nothing really coming from downfield. Having to look reset early, but able to find the open cutter there. As the shot goes up, Great run down. Yeah, that's James to Marquise. And Marquise looks it into Zinda. And how do you like that? That's how you respond to getting broken with your first clean hold of the game. Little cutter to cutter continuation work there from Carlton. And they are able to respond to the break with a hold of their own. So we see the replay there. James hitting Marquise on the goal line. Marquise, good fakes to move the mark. Flips it into Zinda. You love to see that response out of a timeout, especially as a coach. When you use one of those precious timeouts that you get to come out and get a hold right afterwards, makes you feel like you made the right call there, Helen. Absolutely. 
They listened to what was said. It sounds simple when you say it like that, but not always a given, especially at the college level. Very true. And so now we see if the Wellesley O-line can respond with a hold of their own. They've earned the break, don't want to give it back too quickly. Really don't want to give it back at all, considering Wellesley started on defense. That's Barton with the pull. Oh, no. Heartbreaking. And that is a dropped pull. It's happened to all of us. Yeah, we've to all. To happen at Nationals is, is heartbreaking. We've all been there, Josie. Carlton looked to go quickly. Paul gets to Swanson there on the goal line. Any stall count? Perfect. Okay, let's. Uh, you're a little far away. Let's do a ground check here once the defense is ready. Oh, it affected the play. Okay. Uh, give me a sec. Have you resolved it yourselves? Okay. Can't tell if it was a call or a pick, but something that affected the play here. All right, so you guys coming to ask for a ruling? Okay. Can I speak? So yeah, that's yeah, fine. If you can offer perspective. I don't think that that was a pick. I think you were like quite close, and I didn't see you run into anybody. That was just like what I saw. So I, I think. I ran in back there by Denny. Yeah. Okay, so if you think that it affected play, so that would be a contested pick and it would come back to the thrower. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a pick as a contestant is going to come back. All right, and we appreciate our observers being mic'd up for this game to bring that discussion to you viewers at home. With the assistance of the observers, it will remain Carlton possession. Contested pick there, goes back to the thrower. So Emily Hall has it about 15 yards out. Has a te open test Barton at the front cone, who is able to catch it through some contact from Annalise Paul. That is a break for Carlton, and they are able to get this game right back on serve. It seems like Wellesley's walking back to the line as a, as a group to discuss. That, that could be a morale dampener to drop a pull and have it punched in as a goal right there. So. Hoping their discussion is optimistic. Yeah, and I'm sure Josie Koo's teammates are picking her up right now and helping her try and forget that that happened, you know. I don't know about you, Helen, but I've certainly dropped my fair share of pulls in my career. My very first ever drop pull was in my first club tournament with a new team. We were at the U.S. Open. I was playing on a men's team out of Durham at the time. At the U.S. Open, I'd been called on for my first ever O point on the club level. I asked to receive the pull. This big outside end blade comes howling down at me, and I doink it right off of the chest. I mean, I couldn't have eaten it any further in the torso. Uh, and, of course, they scored on the first throw right afterwards to give up the break. Of course. Just to rub salt <laughs> in the wound on you. Yes, I have certainly been there, and it never feels good. But you're right. I think her teammates are absolutely making her forget it. I have... I know that their sideline all weekend has been wonderful, and they their coach did talk about how they they love that they're a team that really trusts and loves each other and plays for each other, and so I know they're hyping her up, giving her reprieve, not asking her to catch it again. This time it's Black who centers the disc to Koo. Koo finds Steedley with the under, and Steedley lets it rip to Collins again. Collins versus Schwartz. A gorgeous throw, but no connection. Yeah, Schwartz able to get positioning there and seal off Collins from making the play. Can't blame her for throwing that, honestly. That connection worked out last time, so worth going back to that well again. Great handler defense there from Koo. Answered by an excellent swing around. From Brooks Kahn and oh, Schwartz with the drop there. Gives the Wellesley O-line a short field. Koo with the strike cut. Steedley, good reset. 
Steedley across to Dolan. And Dolan drops it into Koo. Love to see Koo bounce back like that, getting on the scoreboard. And Wellesley, after turning over the huck, able to play tight defense, get the disc back in good position, and punch in the hold. Much cleaner than their last point. You love to see that. See a replay of how we got there. Schwartz has been dominant in this game so far. Very sure-handed, excellent defender. So an uncharacteristic drop from her there. And good on Wellesley for being able to punish that by scoring quickly the other direction. So we're all tied up at sixes. Working our way towards halftime here. I'm loving that this game is so close. That's what I was hoping for. I hope they continue that excitement. Yeah, both teams playing very well, and in particular, both offenses taking care of business so far. Just one break per side thus far in the contest. Seeing a lot of familiar faces on the field for Wellesley. You know, this is the first time that D3 Nationals has been spread across three days instead of two, and I think one of the things we've seen with fresher players is that the top players are able to play more points having fresher legs across the weekend, spreading out their workload. Oh, an excellent deep cut. Zinda chooses to hit the strike instead. Thomas back to Zinda. Zinda has power position, holsters it. Great defense from Dolan on the strike cut there. Another high stall situation. Koo very active on the mark. Mazenda's able to get it around to Schwartz. Schwartz rips it across. A huge layout grab. What a catch from Harper Brooks Khan. My goodness, in a game that's been pretty consistent and steady, we have been waiting for the fireworks. And my goodness, did they come. What a grab from Brooks Khan. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to give her team the momentum they need to pull ahead a little bit. That is quite the play, definitely a morale booster. You see the replay there, Dolan thinks that she's got a block, and Brooks Khan comes flying out of nowhere, taking a great angle to avoid any contact, just stealing Dolan's block from right out in front of her. A heroic play from Brooks Khan. My goodness, that's the kind of athleticism we all came here to see. What a play. Absolutely, especially with her momentum going the other way on that cut to turn around and lay out. Gorgeous. Just incredible athleticism and body control there. As you see, a timeout is taken by Carlton. So Carlton here has the opportunity to break for half. Wellesley needs a hold to extend the first half of this game. If you're Carlton in the huddle right now after that big layout grab from Brooks Khan, what are you saying to your team, Helen? I am saying let's keep this train rolling. Let's get more of that, more of that, that hype moment. And on the other side, if you're the Wellesley coach after a big play like that, what are you saying to your team to try and get them to calm down and, and stay the course after a big play? After talking to their coach, I know he is saying to this team, let's play our game. We know each other, we know our team. Let's play our game. Don't let the flashy plays get you down. Let's keep it nice and easy, bread and butter. We'll take this time out here to check out some highlights from Schwartz. We see the block and her first goal. She has had her hands all over this game. You'll see these highlights, but even beyond the highlights, plenty of big unders and providing that outlet for her handlers when the stall count gets high. Throws the assist on that last one. You know, we'll go ahead and say she set up uh, she set up Brooks Con for greatness there with that throw. She certainly did. A highlight was never a highlight catch was never created by a perfect throw, Helen. So very true. Shout out to the handlers setting up their cutters to be great.
small note there, but nice to see Koo catching that pull after dropping her last attempt at one. Good to get that confidence back going. Oh, and the throw is just behind Paul. Carlton have the disc to break for half. Working patiently, Hall makes a big strike cut. Gorgeous backhand break. Yeah, really nice way to use that fake to move the mark and throw that around there from Brooks Kahn. Another gorgeous backhand break. But it pops up on her. And Claire James is unable to come down with it just outside the goal line. And Koo walks to pick it up as Wellesley take another crack at getting their hold. This goes up the line to Steedley. Steedley not afraid to put it. And it is cleaned up by Brooks Kahn. Brooks Kahn all over the place to close out this half. As we see the huck go up from Kalmus. Hits Tess Barton in stride right at the goal line. Emily Hall power cut, but Barton not ready for it. Brooks Kahn in space. And there it is, another break for Carlton to take a one break lead into the half. Brooks Kahn is just everywhere right now. Putting her fingerprints all over this game. First the big Superman layout grab. Then the goal to take half. And that is big for Carlton, getting some momentum and building a little cushion for themselves before the break. And there's a noticeable energy shift between the two teams after that goal, Helen. Carlton exuberant, literally bouncing up and down as they come off the field, and Wellesley huddled up right now as a team. You can see their coach talking, trying to inspire the troops and see if you can instill some confidence in them before the second half. Absolutely. These are the make or break moments here. And they are taking their toll. The players are starting to recognize these make or break moments. Well, we're going to take a quick break here at the half. Don't leave us. We've got an exciting game here. Carlton 8, Wellesley 6. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. What would it look like if a competitive sport didn't mean a choice? Between beauty and brutality, style and steel. Between calling yourself out and clawing to stay in. What if there was a game that found balance? between spirit and sport, agony and elation, like a disc dancing on air. We now have evolved into a team sport of a game called Ultimate. It stands by itself in that it is like no other game. Between perfect passes and devastating drops, like the balance we so desperately needed, we had no choice but to create it ourselves. Long live grit and grace. Long live ultimate. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. <laughs>
and that one is pulled down. Josie Gillette inside forehand to Warder, who goes up and gets it. World's live coverage of the 2019 D3 College Championships. From the center of the sun, I mean College Station, Texas. Abby Chang going for it all. Absolutely just ripped it. Unmarked. And she puts up a beautiful shot. Challenging Chun Moy deep and a great layout grab. Around break for Samuels, and she tracks it down. And a great layout catch block. And there it is once again, Noah Chun Moy. Great and Cowan. Lorenzo looking for the goal right away. That one's floating up. And Villanueva goes up. <laughs> he goes up so early and so high. Great block. Hand blocked by Gillette. Salzman goes up big with the hut to be Lorenzo. Lorenzo has a step and the height advantage. Great one-handed catch. Kai DiLorenzo, are you kidding me? Now looking to air it out once again, looking for Strensky. Great toe of the line by Zoe Hex. Airing it out, looking for filling away the deep, and that is an absolute dime. Now Gillette unmarked, and that's a recipe for a backhand huck. Hecht with the fall down forehand, making them 2019 national champion. National championship in her hands. Thank you, USA Ultimate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is a place where we are us at our best. A place where everyone is welcome. Regardless of age, shape, skin color, or anything else that tries to box people in. A place where we defy the odds, defy the naysayers, and even defy gravity. A place where it's accepted that success doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave to the determined. A place that knows grit, knows grace, knows bright lights, and knows empty bleachers. A place where we remember to laugh. Where we learn to trust. Learn to high five strangers. And eventually, even learn to fly. A place where character, community, and competition 
are all as balanced as a disc in flight. That place isn't in a stadium or on a field. That place is in the spirit of our players. Because we don't just play ultimate, we live ultimate. Welcome back to beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the D3 Championships where we are watching a women's division semifinal between Carlton Eclipse and the Wellesley Whiptails. We just wrapped up an exciting first half that featured some incredible offense and only three breaks with the last break coming on the final point of the half for Carlton to go into half up 8-6. Helen, what are your observations and thoughts on the first half so far? I think Carlton really was playing nice, clean, patient offense. They had great defensive positioning as well, um, and that's why they're ahead. But I think Wellesley, they've got the gumption to get there. Let's see if they can pull it off. Yeah, you can see from this look at their line right now that they're eager and ready to go and, and, and ready to try and make this comeback. And we see the pull go up from Tess Barton. Oh, and a miscommunication there. Koo letting it go long. Paul with the first under. Looked like there might have been some contact, but no call is made. And now Carlton have just 25 yards to go. Was they able to work it up the line to Rowell? Inside two cut there and a break. Rowell bounces it to Kalmus. High stall, but Kalmus is able to find Milligan. Milligan about five yards out. Hits Rowell on the reset. Rowell with the big around. Oh, and is that disc up? That looks like a score. And the observers are ruling that it's up. What a save from Tess Barton. The huge layout on the tip around from Rowell. Incredible concentration to stay with it and save the goal for Carlton as we see the replay here. Amazing focus to get her hands underneath that disc. That is a lesson in follow through. Never let it go until it's on the ground. I gotta be honest, Helen, I was prepared for us to look at that replay and feel real uncomfortable because I thought it was down. But that disc is clearly up. That is an incredible catch from Barton. Truly. We've got two real strong contenders for the best catch of the game. We saw Brooks Kahn with a huge layout towards the end of the first half. Barton having her own say for what the catch of the game should be with that incredible focus on that layout. And Carlton building off of their big plays. They're now on a 3-0 run and stretch their lead out to 9-6. To right before that catch in the end zone just now, I was about to say that Carlton's offense seems to be very handler-led, like handlers making her all, the, all their plays, but clearly their cutters are paying attention to where the disc is going. Yeah, and as you see on that replay there, it was Barton that pressured the drop from Wellesley. Not officially bookends, but making her presence felt. And then that grab, I mean, it gets better every time you watch it. You see her change her momentum. She was going backwards, was able to plant and come back forward to save it. I mean, every detail makes it a better and better catch. What a play from Barton. Let's see how Wellesley respond here. A little bit of a zone look from Carlton. Second time we're seeing it from them. They didn't do it for very long. That point earlier in the first half. Let's see if it prevails. It's got Wellesley pinned over on the far sideline right now, but they're able to get it around. Not much wind here, so an interesting choice to throw his own. Huge grab from Koo. Oh, but she throws it right to Kyla Christie. Just not sure she saw her there. And passed it almost right to Christie's chest. Koo with a big mark. 
and that is a stall. Not contested at all. Waiting From a little bit too long to throw <laughs> to her fellow handlers. Yeah, Leon Getton didn't have any obvious look there, and instead of even trying to get a prayer up, just took the stall. Oh, and that swing is just too wide for Chan. And Carlton have yet another opportunity for a break. Hall with the disc here, looking for an option. There's nothing. Has to boost it. Oh, and we see a great block there from Bella Steedley. Patrolling the deep space. Her teammates did an excellent job of shutting down the resets and forcing that disc to go up. And Steedley was there to deny any potential goal for Eclipse. It's really looking like college ultimate now with back and forth, back and forth. Nice little high release, and oh my goodness, Dolan gets up for the grab. Koo with the vision outside in. She's got Annalise Paul. Annalise Paul goes up in the crowd and comes down with it. Visionary throw there from Koo. Excellent grab there from Paul. And after a couple of turnovers, Wellesley are able to get a much needed hold. Who really was driving that offense there and at the end of that point. She knew where she wanted it to go. She knew where she wanted to throw it. Yeah, not even really. You can see from this angle the vision that Ku saw to hit Paul back there. Throwing it with that outside in edge over the defender's head. There was no play for DeHarper on that one. That's no. one of those plays where you really trust your receiver to come down with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ku just playing an incredible amount of minutes and doing everything for her team right now, as you see from the stats there. Those turns are mostly a result of her usage, but two goals, two assists, two blocks. She's been everywhere for the Whiptails so far in this game. This is what these teams play for all year. And Wellesley's coach did tell me that they really didn't know what to expect going into this weekend or their season, let alone. He said they kept asking in September if he thought they could make it to nationals and he really wasn't sure because they had gone so long without playing anyone. <laughs> but here they are. Yeah, the pandemic kind of shifted perspective and expectations for all of us. We're happy to be back out here and give these players the chance to compete. As we see the big around backhand, it's floating. And Steedley didn't time or jump the best, but still able to get the block. Now Wellesley with 70 to go to see if they can break. Oh, and that throw from Black is just too far outside for Carey. Nice under there from Marquise. This has definitely become a grittier game as it's gone on. Yeah, we're still not necessarily seeing a ton of breaks, but it does feel like the turnovers are becoming more common. Zenda throws it up, and Carey is able to get the block. And now Wellesley have it once again with the full field to go. Centering the disc to Steedley. Steedley to Chan. Excellent defense there from Zinda in the handler space. Gave Ku no options. And gets the block. That's some of the most impressive one-on-one -on -one defense we've seen. As Carlton are able to continue it around. I believe that's Kalmus that finds Brooks Khan for the goal. My goodness, that handler defense from Zinda there to get that block, Helen. Some of the most impressive one-on-one -on -one defense we've seen this weekend. Absolutely. You know it's good when you still get the D and your back's turned to the disc. Yeah, your def her defense was so good she had no option but to get the block there, whether she wanted it or not. Excellent play there. Good quick movement to bounce it around the defense. And find Brooks Khan for the hold. And now Carlton just five goals away from securing their spot. 
in tomorrow's championship game. The biggest difference so far that I've seen between these two teams right now, the difference being Carlton being three points up, is that they are able to cleanly capitalize on those turns that they force, whereas Wellesley has had a lot more trouble with that. Yeah, Wellesley's break conversion percentage has not exactly been ideal. Carlton been a lot more efficient with the chances they've been given. You can see the Wellesley coach there, Coach Marshall Goff, trying to inspire his team. They're certainly still in this game. I mean, they are just three points back, and they've had so many break chances. They're definitely going to get more. Absolutely. Their coach did say that they were building confidence throughout this tournament, which you'd love to hear. Instead of losing confidence, they built that confidence all the way to the semifinals. Their tournament certainly started on a rough note, getting upset in their first game by St. Olaf Vortex. As we get a look here during this timeout at some highlights of Josie Koo and the impact that she's had on this game. You see that excellent handler defense. Gets the block. Strong strike cut there. Gets yards of separation. I love the angle on this cut. You can really see it develop, how she brought herself back to the stack and then is able to be the continuation option. Lastly, we see this hug that she threw up to Paul. As we come back to the game, Carlton have pulled it. Another excellent pull from Tess Barton. Tess Barton also the first player down on her own pull. As Koo swings it to Steedley. Oh, and just an unfortunate drop from Dolan right in the bread basket, unable to bring it in. Thomas with the disc now on the far sideline. More great reset defense from Wellesley. Oh, and what a grab from Tess Barton, who's able to continue it. And that's number five, Rowan Dong. They are able to get the goal. For Carlton, but my goodness, Tess Barton all over the place in the second half, and that grab in traffic was incredible. Get another look at it here. Just excellent position and timing. Much taller defender on her back, but unable to get past, and Dong making themselves available for the continuation. Really well done. Carlton now go up four breaks in this game, Helen. Really starting to put some separation between themselves and Wellesley. Absolutely. And on that point, no better feeling than when there's a catch in traffic, but you've got a receiver who is continuing their cut. Yeah, really nice recognition from Dong to not get involved in the pileup, but rather keep going and make themselves available for the goal. Got to make sure there's an option available to reward the excellent grab from Barton. And for those wondering at home, in the other semifinal, started a little bit before ours, so just finished. Middlebury beat St. Olaf 15 to 10. So the Middlebury pranksters will be attempting to defend their title from the fall tomorrow against the winner of this game. Steedley to Paul. Paul, nice around to Koo. Koo keeps it going to Steedley. Dolan just relentless with her cutting. Who looked for Paul deep there, instead swings it to Steedley. This is the most patient offense we've seen from Wellesley so far in this game. As Dolan continues to coup, and coup flips it on in. 
That's Savannah Carey with the goal. And that's a clean hold for the Wellesley offense, and that is probably the best they've looked tonight, Helen. Absolutely. I was just going to say to your point that they looked very patient. They looked like Carlton's been looking this whole game. That's what they need to continue to do. Just be nice, patient, see the whole field, and wait. They've stopped their catch and shoot intentions. Really nice work from Koo there, creating lots of separation on that strike cut. And now it's time for the defense to step up and do their job. Koo continuing to fill the stat sheet, adding to her impressive totals. And although who has been playing so much. She really is putting it all on the line out there. And their coach said that they are a mentally resilient team. And you can see it. And two lining up the pole now. Similar cast of characters out here for Wellesley. Trying to play their top players as much as possible to get back into this game. Disc gets center to Zinda. Nice around to Brooks Con. Oh, and Koo is inches away. And we see an injury there for Koo. Holding her knee. Observer timeout. The whole stadium goes silent here for Koo. We can see the play here. Let's see if there's some sort of collision. Oh, and it's a non-contact injury, which always worrisome. Thrilled to see her walking off the field on her own power. A little bit of a limp. You hate to see that for a player that's been going so hard and playing so hard out there, putting it all on the line for her team for an unlucky misstep like that. Let's hope that she's just rattled and it's not as bad as it seems. Hopefully we'll see her again in this game. And out of the, out of the stoppage, first throw turnover from Kalmus. Becky Chen gets it to Steedley, who boosts it to Dolan. Oh my goodness! What an absurd grab from Dolan! This has been a game of grabs. Oh, and it appears there's a call on the throw. They're talking about it. Okay. I was still with him, and then uh, one of those two, I just caught up behind. Okay. We pause as there is a discussion. Okay, so we got a pick, so let's send it back to the thrower. Oh, and apparently there is a pick, so that isn't going to count for a goal, Helen, but it still counts in that it retains possession. If Dolan doesn't catch that disc, that's a turnover on that pick call, so still an incredibly valuable play as we get another look at it. Incredible awareness and body control to keep the toes down and still hang on to the disc. I mean, that's a third catch in this game that would be the best catch in any other game. Absolutely. So instead of it being for a goal, it saves possession. And Steedley boosts it to the end zone for Collins. Nice find. And we've seen that connection once before, Steedley to Collins. And we see it again this time. And there's no pick to bring that goal back. That one's going to count. And that is a break for the Whiptails. This is some much needed momentum here, especially with Josie Koo going off during that point for an injury. I mean, Tess Dolan's grab there is so good to save possession. And then Steedley's throw there to Collins. He loved to see how excited Dolan is for her teammate. 
just an awesome point for the Whiptails and a great response to the injury to Josie Koo. We'll try and keep you all posted if we hear anything. She's still currently under the team's tent on the sideline. Seems like Wellesley is really gaining momentum with M. Carlton, I'm thinking. Uh-oh. Yeah, there's a certain danger to being that team that goes up and the pressure becomes on you to close the game out because when that momentum starts to slip away and when your opponent's starting to make that comeback, you have to dig deep and find that resilience to stop their run. We'll see if Carlton can answer here, right the ship with a hold. Nice pull from Wellesley, and they get pressure on the first throw. Dolan taking the Zenda matchup. Looks like there was a call. On the stack before the throw. I think there's potentially a pick here. See the players trying to sort out their positioning and where everybody was when it occurred. Okay, so are you calling a pick? Or are you calling an injury? What? I was calling a pick because I ran into her, but she ran into me. She's angry. It's okay. okay, so if it's a pick here, then that's something separate. If it's an injury that you're allowed to say because it's contact related. Okay, if you're calling a pick on here, up there. Okay, so if that's the pick, then that's separate. Okay. So let's just play this as a pick here. All right, so we'll we'll go ahead and restart play over here. All right. Catch up. <laughs> nice work from our observers there. Good communication. It's always one of the more interesting things to see at D3 Nationals. These teams don't get a lot of reps with observers during the season, so there's always an adjustment period to having them. And you can see the teams get more comfortable with them and with utilizing them over the course of the weekend. Okay, when role. you are ready. After the observer discussion, player will be allowed to continue Carlton possession. As we get back to the action here. Marquise with the disc. And Dolan gets the block on the strike cut. Excellent defense there, and she takes off the other direction, and the hut goes up. Oh, and it's just not able to hang for Dolan. She had some steps. She looks to jump back on the mark here. Oh, and a first throw block. Looks like some contact occurred and there's been a call. It felt like it came from behind. The observer ruling is that it is a foul. Disc is going to stay with white. Yes. Helen, what'd you think of that call? Yeah, there was too much contact on it, and I, I think it was the right call. Yeah, I think it was one of those plays where even if perhaps the disc was gotten first, the defender took a line that was going to create contact, and thus that's a foul. Absolutely. As we see Barton streaking deep, Oh, and the throw goes up on the second time. Barton had, Barton had already changed her cut at that point. And now Wellesley have the disc with a chance for another break. They got to go the full 70 to get it, though. You can tell these teams are starting to really feel the pressure and, and get tired as they're shooting with no connection. Yeah, I think we're definitely starting to see some tired decisions. Oh, a huge, huge point block there for Claire James. Steely had Dolan going deep with steps, but James says no. Perfect big play right in the red zone. This is right where you want that to happen. Great reset defense once again from Wellesley. Their reset pressure has been so consistently good all game. Brooks Kahn steps out for the around. And that is another goal for Molly Schwartz. It's been a while since we said her name. You knew she had something brewing, and she is able to come down with that floaty around from Brooks Kahn to get Carlton the much needed hold. The hero on that point being Claire James with a phenomenal point block. Well, 
We see the replay there. Just absolutely stuffs it, OB. Nice fake from Brooks Khan there to set up the around backhand. Schwartz goes up, gets big, and comes down with it. So it wasn't pretty, but Carlton get their hold. They've now got just three goals to go to secure their spot in tomorrow's final. I think at this point it's gonna be a game of who's really got the energy at the end. Yeah, you have to factor in that Wellesley's played an extra game than Carlton. So for them to have to be coming from behind with that extra mileage on their legs, it's a tall task. But one that the Whiptails are gonna do their best to try and be up to. And for everyone wondering at home, Josie Koo is not back in the game yet, but she is up on the sideline supporting her team. Nice to see her moving around decently well, cheering her teammates on. Seeing that zone again from Carlton. Black with the outside end flick over the zone. And what are we gonna call this? Are we saying it's up? It's we up. are saying it's up. <laughs> Annika Wahlberg using every part of her body to catch that. Gets the disc back to Steedley. Steedley boosts it to the end zone. Is that up? Is that a grab? The observers are ruling it up. And it looks like the defender. That's fine. You guys can continue this discussion while that's being settled. And that looks like number 18, Colleen Milligan. We see her go down there in the front of the screen. That is a close catch from Savannah Carey. You do see that the disc touches the ground, but does she have control of it when it makes contact with the turf? Oh, for what it's worth. Okay, observer ruling is that it was up, so that's a score. And the observers are ruling up. Another amazing grab in this game. We are getting highlight after highlight here in the second half. Excellent concentration from Savannah Carey to come down with that disc and get the whip tails a hold. And two back-to-back -back really interesting grabs from Wellesley. You love to see them really putting it all out there to grab those, those uh, throws that are just out of reach. <laughs> and that's another one where the disc touches the ground, but it looks like possession is sustained when it happens right there. The spin is stopped. Millimeters above the turf, the spin of the disc has stopped, and that is a grab. <laughs> what an incredibly hilarious grab. What are the chances? What are the chances that Annika Wolberg knew anything about what she was doing there, Helen? <laughs> How much do you want to win nationals? Enough to catch with my feet. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to tap that play for the old two world catch of the catch of the year bracket that we do every winter. Looking back on the best plays of the year, I'm already excited about uh, Keith Rayner being upset with that one winning. But what a grab from Wolberg. And Wellesley do what they've got to do to get the hold. Coming back the other direction. Wellesley sideline's really having a good time too. You can tell they're they're starting to get that momentum and really hold it down. There's different ways to find energy, right? There's obviously your normal energy that you have, but you can certainly absorb and gain energy from the people around you and from your sideline picking you up. And the Whiptail sideline is doing everything they can to keep their players motivated and engaged and fighting till the very end of this game. We see Kalmus tap it in, hit the nice break shot to Brooks Khan. Brooks Khan goes up, jump disc, and leap. Leah Black wins it, reading the disc perfectly, positioning herself under it, and getting the block. 
And now Black brings it in, full 70 to go. Nice around to Steedley. Steedley uncorks it. She's got Collins going deep. Collins trying to get positioning. Good read. And she is unable to come down with it. Excellent defense there from Carlton. We've seen a lot of shots from her. And that was Grace Haig with the block. Zinda up the line there to Barton. Barton shoots it to Brooks Kahn, who catches it, but just short of the end zone. Can she find an option to flip it in? A lot of congestion there. Zinda's able to get it. Zinda's got a target in the back of the end zone. Doesn't want to hit it, though. Brooks Kahn working real hard at the front. Has to shoot it. And that is 26. Claire James towing the line, reaching up, grabbing that disc. Carlton get the hold. They flirted with danger, giving Wellesley a break opportunity. But they're able to get it back with the block on this deep shot you'll see here. Haig able to throw off Collins on that catch. Nice front cone defense there from Wellesley, but Claire James is able to get open. This is truly a game of grabs, especially that last score from Carlton. A game of really, really good highlight reel grabs. Yeah, we see the Whiptail sideline getting involved with the crowd, giving the people what they want, having fun out here. They're going to go out, they're going to go out in their style, and that's fun, loose, and enjoying their trip to Nationals. But this game's not over yet. They've still got time for a comeback. It's going to need to start with a hold on this possession. See the Wellesley O-line. Similar cast of characters from what we've been seeing. Nice floaty pole. Nice shape on that throw from Black to Steedley. Again, seeing that come from Carlton. But Wesley is shredding it. Yeah, really nice work to get around it and advance, gain some yards. See if they can rinse and repeat here. Scuba around. A little bit of sauce. Carey explodes for the catch. Swings it out wide. And that's number seven, Becky Chen, finding Steedley for the hold. A couple of really nice throws to get around that zone there, Helen. Interesting that Carlton is choosing to do that cup when there is no wind, especially knowing that this team has a lot of shooters. Wellesley does. Yeah, and you wonder if they're maybe trying to play the clock a little bit here. We're mere seconds away from soft cap. Maybe just trying to buy some time for their offense to rest. It was a pretty fresh group out there for defense. Whatever it may be, it wasn't successful as Wellesley were able to shred right through that zone. Absolutely, and earlier we talked about energy, really getting it from the sideline, and it seems like we've had sort of a, a perspective shift. Earlier, Carlton had all the energy on the sideline, and now it seems like Wellesley's got it. Yeah, their offense certainly stepped up, even in the absence of Koo. See the pole go up from Steedley. Big hanging pole. And great pull coverage from the Wellesley defense. Been really impressed with the Wellesley handler defense all game. They've applied a ton of pressure and forced some really tightly contested resets. Nice find there. Zinda to James, James to Barton. 
Barton wanting to uncork it. Instead goes up the line to Kalmus. Kalmus with the big fake. And she unleashes this time. She's got Barton open back there. Can Barton toe the line? And it's just too far. And that Barton-Dolan matchup has been a ton of fun to watch here in the second half. So we see Leah Black walking the disc up. You know, Wellesley have had break chances in this half, but none of them have been quality break chances. They've all been having to work from one of the cones, going the full 70. It's difficult to work from that position. Excellent, excellent grab there from Paul. Paul swings around to Steedley. Steedley up the line to Dolan. Dolan's got a cutter going deep, pumps it off and instead hits Paul. Nice offense here from Wellesley. Can they finish it off? Paul goes up the line to Black, into a crowd. And Leah Black, taller than most, is able to rise above the rest of the pack, come down with the disc for the Wellesley break. And just like that, it is a one point game. I'm loving that the majority of these end zone catches Wellesley have been contested by Carlton, but they're still coming down with them. They really have the momentum here. Yeah, you see the crowd that Black had to go up in for that one, having to go up over her primary defender and the help defender. Still able to come down with it, forcing Carlton into calling a timeout. So if you're Carlton, you're two points away from earning your spot in the final. But Wellesley has the momentum right now. What do you say to your team in the huddle here, Helen? I'm saying we need to play our game. Carlton has just overshot a few of their, of their end zone chances. And they just need to slow it down like they did in the first half. They were nice and easy, trusted each other. They weren't going too fast. It looked great. They need to go back to that. Going to give you a quick look here during this timeout at some Brooks Con highlights. Harper Brooks Con has been all over the place in this game. Some incredible highlights, also just doing the little stuff. We see maybe the play of the game there, that huge layout grab. We see Schwartz calling for it, and Brooks Con making the incredible play. I love watching that replay. It really is so great. And you see Brooks Con's timing is kind of perfect with the rest of her handlers, timing those breakside looks, always making herself available. And shows a little bit of the throwing prowess there at the end of Schwartz as well. Great game from number 15, Harper Brooks Con. Well, let's see if she can conjure up that magic a couple more times to give Eclipse the two points needed to earn their spot in tomorrow's final. So the disc gets centered up to Kalmus. And I have to be honest, oh, as there's a block there from Leah Black. Leah Black picking up the disc. Just 35 yards or so to go. The around backhand to Dolan. Dolan, incredible explosion to go up and get the disc. She's got it, dumps it off to Black. Black goes around. And there it is, number seven, Becky Chen. Another break for Wellesley. My goodness. What a grab from Tess Dolan, exploding up over her defender to go get it. Unbelievable athleticism. And Wellesley continued in, and just like that, it is tied at 13, game to two for a spot in the national final. They really have carried that momentum through to this position of 13s. It's been so great to watch these grabs. <laughs> I mean, make a poster of this grab. Get it at your peak, Tess Dolan. My goodness. Just like her grab over in the end zone during that 
pick call to keep the play alive. She's got hands for days. Yeah, I'm not sure Steedley knew about Chen's presence on that grab, looking surprised in the replay. But just like that, Carlton's 13-10 lead has quickly dissipated. This game is back on serve. 13-13, game to do, a spot in tomorrow's final on the line. See the pull go up here from Steedley. Disc gets centered to Brooks Kahn. Oh, fakes the throw deep to Barton, but holsters it instead. Zinda with the disc. And Zinda shoots it to Barton. Barton elevates for the grab over Savannah Carey. Continues it up the line to Zinda. Through the contact, just shy of the end zone. Oh, and she tries to flip it into Brooks Kahn. But it's too tight of a throw for Brooks, to, Brooks Kahn to come down with. And now Wesley has the disc again. 70 to go for the break to take the lead. Dolan goes up and gets it. Aggressive with every catch. Leah Black. Just been doing everything in the handler space. As the disc goes up, Maya Collins is streaking deep. What a throw from number 40, Jenny Chan. Maya Collins has it on the doorstep. Dumps it off to Steedley. Steedley looking for anybody, any kind of option. Calls a timeout instead. Uh, we love a, a good veteran move. My heart is racing right now. Wellesley are on another level right now, making play after play, grinding through this comeback. They're already on a three goal run, and they have the disc five yards out to make it a four goal run. As you see how we got here, what looked like an easy goal bounces just off the chest of Brooks Kahn. What an unbelievable throw from Jenny Chan. Uncorking that backhand to Collins, hitting her in stride. My goodness, my heart is pounding right now. What an incredible series of plays. But we didn't even go back far enough to see the Tess Barton grab and the build up to that play from Carlton. That was just a great sequence of plays from Wellesley and, and they're hyping up the crowd here. Everyone in the stands, they are feeling the momentum and so are we. Yeah, this crowd is just into this game. Excitement going both directions. It doesn't feel like it's aimed at one team or another. But they are just thrilled to see some amazing ultimates so far. And now let's see what play Wellesley has drawn up for themselves coming out of this timeout. Let's see what Coach Marshall Goff has planned for his players. Vertical stack with Dolan as the primary reset. Leah Black at the front. Oh, and it's a high stall prayer. Oh my God, Tess Dolan. So far out the back, but the commitment to try and get that disc is remarkable with no regard for her own safety, crashing into the USA Ultimate sign in the back of the end zone. She will do anything to come down with the disc. The hunger is unreal. Look at the commitment coming flying from out of frame. An unbelievable grab. Nowhere near to being in, but you still love to see the commitment. Exactly. The ruling on the play was a stall prior to the What's your throw. Coming in on? Possession goes to Carlton. So coming in saying four? Yeah. Hilariously, none of it meant anything as there was a stall on the throw. Carlton have the disc now, 70 yards to go for their hold. Nice grab on the up line there from Kalmus. Kalmus hits Zinn on the around. Nice grab there from Grace Hay. Oh, Barton grabbing the disc behind her. Oh, and Leah Black gets a piece, earning the disc back for Wellesley. 
Black has been phenomenal since Ku went out, really stepping up as the primary handler. This time, though, contributing as a defender. Oh, and that's a run-through block for Kalmus. Everything is happening right now, folks. This game is crazy. You can tell they both want it, and they want it badly. You can almost feel the players feeding off of the crowd, contributing to the frenetic pace of this game. Nice mark there from Chan moving around, but it opens up the throw down field to James. James resets it to Kalmus. Kalmus has Zinda on the reset. Not much happening downfield for Zinda. She's gonna have to punt it and hope for the best, and it's not gonna work. Steedley is there to clean it up. Oh, that's a sick inside from Steedley to Chan. Dolan making herself available on an under. Nice around to Chan. Chan continues it to Black. Black has Carey going. Throws it a little bit late. Carey lays out for it, unable to get there. They've got to slow it down a little bit more and have patience. I know it's hard in these moments, these nail-biting moments. It's starting to feel, Helen, like whoever wins this point is going to win the game. It's stretching on for so long. Starting to feel like the decisive point in this match. Absolutely. Oh, and Zenda's throw to James goes just wide, giving Wellesley terrific field position. They've got about 15 yards to go for their break. Black throws it around to Carey, and Carey goes up to get it, and that is another break for Wellesley. The run continues after being down 13-10. They are now up 14-13, and pulling with a chance to break for a spot in tomorrow's final. What a gutsy, resilient effort from this Wellesley Whiptails team to put themselves in a position to have a chance to win, Helen. The first half of this game looked completely different from the game that it is now, and it is exciting. Leah Black here with the assist. Talk about ever since Ku went out, Black has stepped up, been the primary handler, made the difficult throws, and her receivers are just taking turns, making incredible grabs. We've seen it from Dolan, we've seen it from Collins. This time it's Carey who goes up to get it. You see the stat line there from Carey, four goals on the game. Feels like she's been all over the place. And now Wellesley are pulling with a chance to break for the win. And Carlton are just reeling right now. Honestly, when Josie Ku went out with the injury, I was a little worried for Wellesley, but every single person on their roster has stepped up to the plate. Everyone on that line right now has played many, many points in a row, and they are pulling it through. All right, we have Bella Steedley here getting ready to pull. Looks like the same group out there for Wellesley. They're gonna ride their top seven, either to the end of their season or to a spot in the final. Kalmus centering the disc to Zinda. Zinda's got Barton out wide. Barton's got a streaking target going deep. It's number six, Molly Schwartz. Schwartz, unable to get there. And now Wellesley have the disc with the potential to earn a spot in the championship game. Leah Black walking it up. She's got Steedley wide open on an under. Maya Collins. Dolan goes deep. It's floating. Oh, Dolan almost comes down with it, but excellent position there from Kalmus. Zinda with the disc now. Nice little inside shot there to Brooks Khan. Brooks Khan moving it to James. James overshoots Brooks Khan. Leah Black with the D. Black peeling off from the stack to get that block. Swings it to Chan. Chan to Dolan, but it is too far wide. And now Carlton are going to have the disc right around midfield to try and get their hold.
Thomas with the disc. Needs an option. There's no reset. Zendo comes back for it. Great cut. Zendo swings it out wide to James. The vision on that throw, spectacular to see James across the field wide open. And Zenda wide open on the strike cut. And Carlton are able to get their hold. And just like that, we are tied at 14. Double game point with a spot on the line. Both these team seasons on the line. I did not expect this going into this game, but I am so glad this is how it's turning out. It's been a game of runs with Carlton opening up a lead in the second half, but then Wellesley battling back with four straight to go up. And now Carlton forced double game point. For those of you wondering at home why this is game to 15, I was corrected yesterday by an observer. The win by two rule, overtime, game to 16, no longer exists in the new edition of the rules. It is straight up to 15. Double game point for both of these teams. The winner plays tomorrow. The loser season is done. It's interesting the way that these teams have almost swapped roles in the second half. Wellesley seems to be playing the clean, slow, well, not slow necessarily, <laughs> but clean <laughs> offense that Carlton was playing early on. And Carlton is missing with those deep shots the way that Wellesley was in the first half. But here we are at 14s. Anything is possible. How lucky are we to be here right now, Helen? After the last couple of years with the pandemic canceling nationals, for these players to get the opportunity to be out here and put a bow on their college careers for the seniors, get this opportunity to compete in a beautiful stadium in front of an amazing crowd, everything on the line. These are the moments we cherish. Let's see how it all plays out. Absolutely. Chan centers the disc to Black. Black's got a wide open Seedley. Something must have happened there, and it appears there was a pick on the play. I called on you, so let's bring the disc back here unless you want to contest. <laughs> well, let's send it back here unless you want to contest. It's up to you. All right, so the pick call is being upheld. A little bit of a buzz kill with this call here. The crowd's gone completely silent as well as the players figure this out. And immediately the energy picks back up as the disc gets tapped in. Black needs an option, has to boost it, and there is nobody home. And now Carlton are going to have the disc with about 65 yards to go trying to get the break that sends them to tomorrow's final. Brooks Kahn picks it up. Kalmus is guarded. Brooks Kahn has to put it out wide to Tess Barton, who's not able to get there. And now Wellesley have it again. Leah Black coming to pick it up. Being marked by Zinda. These two have been so prominently involved for their teams. Dolan gets the under, swings it to Steedley. Steedley works it up to Carey. Carey has Paul at the front cone, and Paul goes up to get it. And Wellesley are going to the national championship game. They complete the comeback, down 13-10. Rattle off four straight goals to take the lead. Punch in the hole to get the win. Wellesley go nuts, the crowd go nuts. What an amazing comeback for Wellesley and the upset to topple the number two seed in the tournament, Carlton Eclipse. My goodness, Helen, what did we just see? I don't think anyone expected this, and I am so happy because Wellesley deserved it at the end. They really, they really did pull through in a way. I don't know if anyone expected but them, but they carried that momentum through. And you love to see the pure excitement from Annalise Paul there. I have goosebumps just watching it. Just raw emotion there, celebrating with her teammates. Catching the big goal, an amazing throw from Savannah Carey to have the courage, to have the guts to put that throw there. Obviously though, the other side of this coin, what a heartbreaking loss for Carlton. Truly, especially having three championship wins in their franchise history. But this gives Wellesley a chance to have their first. Yeah, and what we're gonna see tomorrow now is a rematch of the New England Regional Final. 
between Middlebury and Wellesley. In that game, Middlebury were able to beat Wellesley by two. They beat Wellesley by two twice at regionals. So saying in sports that it's hard to beat a team three times in a season. Middlebury are gonna have to do that tomorrow if they want to defend their championship. And for Wellesley, they get chance at finally pulling off that upset that they've been seeking all season. Absolutely. Definitely always hard to beat a team twice. I'm excited to see that matchup without a doubt. And you see Josie Koo in the middle there. She's got some t bandage on her knee. And for Carlton, just an absolutely heartbreaking loss. You see Harper Brooks con there. Just phenomenal all game. And after an amazing weekend, this is the path that we have taken to the destination tomorrow. Middlebury beat St. Olaf. Wellesley beat Carlton. And now we get that New England rematch tomorrow. What are your thoughts going into that game, Helen? I watched Middlebury play a game against um, a lower seated team. I can't remember the name right now, but it was a really, really windy game and, and they looked good. They had a lot of upwind breaks, but after what I just saw from Wellesley, I don't know what to expect going into it. Yeah, it's I mean, going to be quite the contested matchup. We talked at the beginning of this game how, you know, talking to the crowd, talking to people beforehand, Carlton felt like the heavy favorite. And they looked that way up at 13-10. But Wellesley had other plans. Storming back to come back and win. Before we head out, we're gonna see some highlights from this game, and my God, there were so many of them. Just some unreal grabs. You see that beautiful deep shot from Steedley to Collins. I mean, there were so many good grabs in this game. Which one was your favorite, Helen? Hard to say. The one from Brooks Con that we just saw is gorgeous, but I think that the grab from Dolan on the pick call where she kept it alive was just incredible. That is real commitment. That is semifinals behavior. Yeah. We see that one it right, right there. We see it right there. Unbelievable concentration. The grab from Martin before that. Unbelievable focus and athleticism to change directions there. We see maybe the most comical catch of the game, but one that proved crucial as they scored on that point and every point counted in this game. My goodness, what, what an amazing, shot. amazing game. To cap an amazing day and weekend of Frisbee. That's gonna do it for us here. Please check in back, back with us tomorrow for the two finals. We'll have them streamed here on Ultra World. Your final score, number 15, Wellesley, 14, Carlton. Have a good night, everybody.